In this video, we're going to model a flow-through planter. This is a key piece of green infrastructure for uh, filtering water in urban environments. Um, so this is what the rendering is going to look like when we finish it in Lumion, adding um, textures, pebbles, rocks, and planting, and then render it. We're going to start in Rhino and model the structure of it. So let's start a new Rhino template in small objects, centimeters. I'm going to start by uh, setting my grid options in the command line. I'm going to type in grid. I'm going to set my snap spacing to 10 centimeters, my liner, minor line spacing to 10 centimeters, my major line interval to a meter, my distance to 1,000, and apply this to all viewports. I'm going to zoom out in top view and I'm going to start drawing this in top view. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to type in the values. I'm going to make it 150 centimeters, a meter and a half wide. I'm going to make it five meters long, 500 centimeters. That's my size. I'm going to zoom all of my windows with zoom, Z, enter, all, A, enter, extends, E, enter, Z, so I see my, my view in top, plan view, and I'm going to draw a profile of it to start to understand the dimensions. So I'm going to draw another rectangle. It's obviously going to be 150 centimeters wide. And then how tall? I'm going to make this probably 75 centimeters, maybe 70 to make our life a little bit easier. Okay, so this will be the concrete box of the planter. Now I want to add a soil layer inside of it. I'm going to have soil filter, a filter fabric layer, and then gravel beneath that. I'll start by drawing the gravel. I'm going to go 10 centimeters inside. I could also do an offset here, but I'm going to draw um, my gravel layer. I'm going to draw another rectangle snapping onto that corner or onto the grid. I've got grid snap turned on and object snap turned on. And I'm going to make this just one. This is, um, I think, 130 centimeters wide and then only one centimeter tall. So I'm going to type that in one. I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'm going to snap onto the top corner of that filter fabric. Draw this actually all the way up to the top for now. So now I'm just going to um, extrude. I'm going to move these curves in one grid increment in centimeters. And I'm going to extrude the outer curve as a box. So I'm going to use the command extrude curve. Make sure solid is checked yes. And I'm going to draw it to the opposite end of my box. I'm going to put perspective view into ghosted mode on the drop down. Ghosted. Now I'm going to select all of my other curves and extrude them um, until about 10 centimeters to the end. So extrude curve, and I'll draw them to the last grid interval before the end of my box. What we're going to do is do a Boolean difference to subtract them from the outer box. So I'm going to subtract, select the outer box. I'm going to use the command Boolean difference. You can find that under solid. Difference. Boolean difference. I've selected to subtract from this outer box, and I need to select the surface to subtract with. That will be everything inside the box. So I'm going to select all of this and enter. I'm going to make sure delete input is set to no. 
This has cut the box out of the stuff inside. I'm going to put it on another layer so we can clearly see that. I'll make a layer called concrete. I'm going to move the box onto that layer. I'm going to hide it right now. Attention. Okay, so one thing I want to do is scale my soil layer right here. So I'll go ahead and put it on a new layer called soil. And I, I want to scale it down so there's room for the plants beneath the lip of, and water beneath the lip of the concrete. So I'm going to use the command scale1d. I could also simply scale it and translate it with a gumball like this. But I'm going to use the command scale1d. I'm going to click right here, click up at the top, and drag it down to where we need this. Right, scale1d. And if I check how this looks, that's looking nice. Got planting media, filter fabric, gravel, and some place space for the water and planting. I'll go ahead and move my other layers onto my other objects onto another layer. So I'll select the extrusion for the filter fabric and put it on the filter layer. Right click on the layer, change object layer, and I'll select the um, gravel. Make a layer called gravel and right click, change object layer. I'll finally make a layer called curves and move all the curves onto that. I'm going to go to edit, select objects, curves, and place all of the slide first. Select objects, curves, and place all my curves on the curve layer. Just stay organized. Now, I want to make my box look a little nicer, so I'm going to um, I'm going to cancel the edges on the top of it. Um, I'm going to use the command camphor edge, that's under solid, fillet edge, camphor edge. I'm going to set my camphor distance to, I think, five centimeters. And I'm going to click on these edges on the outside of the concrete walls. This is to make a nice soft edge so that if someone runs into the side of it, I'll hit enter, they won't hurt themselves. So now we've camphored the edges. These will be much safer for pa pedestrians passing by and will also improve the longevity of our planter and give it a certain aesthetic. Okay, our box is starting to shape up. Now we need to add a pipe bringing water into this and a pipe an overflow pipe that will let water fill it up and then um, leave the planter. So for this scenario, we are going to have a pipe coming from a building, bringing storm water off of a building and into the planter. I'm going to draw this in, um, I'm going to start drawing it in uh, right view. I'm going to use a polyline. I started just a little inside the planter at a reasonable height. And I'll draw it for simplicity's sake a little bit above the top of the planter rim. And I'll move it down later. And so to finish my polyline, I'm going to put a fillet to give a nice curve here. So I'm going to use the command fillet that's under curve, fillet, curve. I'm going to set the radius here to probably 15 centimeters. I'm going to click on the first section of the curve and then the second section and make a nice fillet right there. 
That looks good. I'm going to move this down and into position. Can I move it also in top view? I'm going to move it uh, using the move command. I'm going to move it sideways, just five centimeters to be nicely in the middle. Okay, it's in position. I'm going to use a pipe command to construct a pipe around this. I'm going to click on it and type in the command pipe. So I'm going to have a radius at the beginning and end, both of five, and I'm also going to give this a thickness. So I'm going to click thick yes before I start. I'm going to make my start radius. As you can see here, five, enter. Second radius will be five. Oh, the second uh, radius is the thickness. I'm going to click on wall thickness instead right here and set the wall thickness to one. And my end radius will be five. And enter to finish. So there I have a nice pipe. To bring water into my planter. I'm going to put another pipe at the other end. This is to drain it. So I'll start drawing this in right view. I'm going to draw a polyline. And I'm going to draw it inside the planter and down a little bit. Now, I want this to be above the surface of the soil a bit, so I'm going to move it up uh, maybe five centimeters in right view. It's not just uh, snapping upwards. Now I'm going to move this, I'm going to draw the section on the side, so polyline or object snaps on. I'm going to draw this going on the side of it. Make sure I join these. I could have drawn them all at once. And before I bother moving it, um, I'll go ahead and I'll move it to the middle. Use the move command to move it just five centimeters nicely into the middle. I'm going to use a fillet command to give this a nice curve. So fillet, uh, sorry, um, I'm going to um, yeah, fillet. Um, the radius will be 15 again. So this curve and this curve have a nice um, curve in our pipe now. And I'm going to use the pipe command again to create a pipe around it. Pipe, start radius will be five. I'm going to make sure I set the thickness to one. So start radius is five, thickness is one, end radius is five, and enter to finish. And it looks like I have a nice pipe here. Before I go on, I'm going to do some Boolean operations to cut this through the concrete in the soil. Um, you'll see why this is going to be necessary later. It's because I'm going to take a section cut through the whole thing. So I'm going to select this, my pipe. Um, actually, I'm going to select um, all of the other layers, the concrete, the filter, the earth, and the gravel, and I'm going to run Boolean difference. I'm going to do the difference on the pipe and make sure delete info is set no. Select the pipe. And this has cut out the soil and gravel and concrete and so forth inside of the pipe. And I need to delete what's filling it now. So you can see there's a bit filling the pipe right here. Even a little bit right here in the filter layer. 
when I click on multiple objects that are overlapping, I get a selection menu. And now it mouse over to find the right object. So now I've cleaned up inside my pipe. And there's really just one last set of tasks um, to do before materials, and that is putting a guard on the top of our overflow drain. Um, so what <clears throat> we're going to do is um, model from circles a series of extrusions um, and then use a polar array to cut holes um, in the drain. So I'm going to draw a circle on top of the on the top of the drain here. I'm going to make a first circle that is a diameter of 10, the width of the pipe. I'm going to draw a second circle snapping also onto the um, endpoint of the pipe. And I'm going to make this this wide, snapping onto the grid. Now, I'm going to select both curves. And they're coplanar, so they're going to ex um, extrude a thickness together. So I'm going to use a command extrude curve. I'll make the extrusion distance just one centimeter. I'll make sure I draw it up. So one centimeter up. So you can see I now have a nice connection to the pipe. I'm going to take um, the curve that was here and I'll move it up one centimeter in right view. So move with M. Draw the vector right here and one to move it up. Now I'm going to extrude, um, I'm going to offset this curve one centimeter in size. So offset, distance of one inside. So I'm going to select both of these curves and offset, um, extrude them upwards. So extrude curve. I'm going to draw the height I want for them, like so. I'm finally going to put a cap on the top of this, so I'm going to move just the outer curve up to the top. And I'm going to extrude curve again, give this a thickness of one centimeter, and I have a cap on the top of now, this is a nice object, hollow, but I need to cut some holes in it for water to flow through. So I'm going to draw one of the holes in either front or right view, and my um, right view is a little cleaner, so I'll draw it there. So. I'll move this into the right position after I draw it. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. I'm going to draw it taller than it needs to be and scale it. So I'll draw it nice and tall. And then for the width, I'm going to make the width um, just one centimeter. Now you can see it's obviously too tall. I'm going to use the command scale 1D. I'm going to find the center as my base point, and I'm going to make the scale factor 0.75 and make sure the scale distance is vertical. Hold down shift to get ortho, scale it vertically nicely. Now I'm going to fillet the corners on this to make a nice rounded top. And I'm going to fillet it by half a centimeter. So I'm going to select the curve, fill it. The radius will be 0 0.5. 
Set in the command line. I'm going to click right here and right here. It's got me half of it. Enter to run the command again. Here, right here, and then kill it. Enter. Right here. Enter. Right there. So now we have a nice fillet for this. So the way we're going to do this first move it into the right position. I'm going to move it, I guess, half a centimeter over. And it's in approximately the right position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude it in first. So I can use it for a Boolean operation. Extrude curve. I'm going to make sure that it's um, just thick enough to go through. I'm going to now do a polar array to array it around this. And I'm going to select the extrusion. To make sure it works, I could probably move it a little bit outside of this, but it'll be fine. So I'm going to select my extrusion. I'm going to do a polar array, array polar. I'm going to snap the center of the polar array onto, sorry, I have object snap turned on. I'm going to snap it to the endpoint of the pipe. That should be basically the center of the cylinder. Number of item, I'll do 36, 360 degrees around the cylinder. And I get a preview, enter to accept. There I have my cutting objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them, including the cylinder. So I'll draw a selection window right here from right to left. Select all of it, then I'll shift click to deselect the cylinder. That lets me select my cutting objects, for example. So what I'm going to do is select the cylinder, Boolean difference. I'm going to subtract with all of these. And I want to make sure I make delete input yes this time. Select all of these, enter. And there I have a nice cutout. We're ready to finally add materials to our scene. Just about done. I'm going to set all my viewports to rendered so I can see what my materials are going to look like. I'm going to start by selecting all of my curves, edit, select objects, curves, I'm going to make sure they're on the curve layer and hide it. Change object layer and hide. Um, I'm going to make sure that all the parts of this pipe are on the metal layer. I think we should have all of our stuff on layers nicely now. I'm going to assign materials. So concrete, I'm going to click on the orb under material concrete. It brings up the layer material manager. I'm going to click on the drop down here, use a new material, import from material library. I'm going to go to architectural and browse to wall, concrete, concrete light. Set. Here I have my concrete material. I'm doing materials by layer to stay organized. Metal, I'm going to click on the orb, drop down, use a new material, import from material library. I'm going to go to metal, polished, polished aluminum, and accept. Soil, I'll click on the material orb, drop down, 
use a new material, import from library, architectural, exterior, gravel, gray dirt. Hide the concrete so we can see what we're doing. For um, the gravel layer, I'll click on the orb, move drop down, use a new material from library, and I'm going to go to architectural, exterior, gravel, gravel, small gray stone. Finally, I'm going to apply a layer for the filter. So I'll click on the orb, drop down, use new material, import from material library. I'm going to go to textile, and I'm going to pick the brown have my materials here now and the scene's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do one final step and that is a boolean difference to cut a section through my scene. So I'm gonna draw a big box and then the default layer. I'm gonna draw it bigger than my object and I'm gonna and move it nicely into place. Use the move command to move this five centimeters over, right in the middle. I'm going to select everything, deselect the box with a control click, Boolean difference, um, delete input yes, and I'm going to click on the box um, as my subtract width, enter. And I have a section cut nicely through my flow through planter. This will make let me make a sort of rendered diagram of a, a section cut or a section perspective. Okay. So um, one last thing is in perspective view, we're looking in rendered mode right now. We want to make this slightly nicer. We can turn it to ray traced mode and do ray tracing with the cycles render engine. It's running it by passes so as you first move it you'll see a lot of big pixels and then the image will start to resolve as the seconds pass and it takes more passes which you can see in the bottom right here the image will become a better and better rendering we can already start to see better reflections on the materials okay in the next video we will import this into lumion put plants and pebbles and textures, and then render the scene. Thank you.